Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today, a little late in the day, I usually have brew early in the morning. We're gonna do a candied wit, but we've got a lot going on. Doing three and a half pounds of Golden Promise, two and a half pounds of wheat malt, and a half pound of acid malt to help get the pH down, plus a drop and a half pound of flaked wheat, which means we're putting in the rice hulls. But here's where it gets interesting. I'm gonna drop one ounce of Pacific Jade. It's a New Zealand hop, if I remember right and it gives you citrus leaning towards the lemon side and some black pepper. We're gonna drop that a whole ounce, but we're only gonna do it in the last five minutes. It's only gonna give us about 12 IBU, plus or minus. And in that last five minutes, I'm also gonna try something new. I get this Cascade Beer Candy Syrup called, Cascade Beer Candy Syrup, but it's the Belgian Wit version, which has got the orange peel and the coriander already in it. And then to top everything off, we're gonna ferment with, I see it listed as a Quake yeast, which I hear multiple pronunciations, even from people from Norway. Also, it's called a farmhouse yeast because this isn't really from Norway, this is from Lithuania. And it's Jarvru, or Jarvru, so hopefully I'm saying that correct. But it's gonna give us lemon pith, which I'm assuming is more of the bitter part of the lemon, and more black pepper. We're gonna ferment that at about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. It goes from 68 to about 95 Fahrenheit. We want to get a lot of the phenolics and the, the different flavors and things that we're going to get from the yeast by fermenting it on the warmer side. So it's going to be a simple seven pounds. It's actually about a pound less than what uh, Anvil says as far as for their minimum. We'll see how it goes. We've got our Scylla here from Jaded Brewing. We have some beer over here that we need to be moving. That's our West Coast on the East Coast. If you haven't seen that video yet, that's for the part two. And we have our Anvil Foundry. So let's get brewing. Okay, time to get mashed in. Went a little nuts this season with pepper seeds and pepper plants, little baby plants. And now I've got a pepper forest. Everything from scorpion peppers down to Tabasco. Kind of excited. Okay, we're sitting at 148, 150. I'm gonna drop that power down. One of the subscribers mentioned dropping the power down as far as to 85% or plus or minus a little, should be able to get the actual temp to stay closer to the set temp. So we'll try that. Almost forgot we got our water addition. This is everything but the baking soda and chalk, which we'll add later. So we don't want to add any acidity or sorry, any alkaline. A little trick there with the calcium chloride, smash the hell out of it, crush it up. That way you know it's going to dissolve a lot easier. It doesn't stay in little pellet forms, which is very annoying. And drop our basket in on in. Let's get mashed in. Okay, we'll be right back. Head on. Head on. Okay, here we go. Kick the pump on. Open the valve. There we go. And we're gonna let that go for about 75 minutes before we mash out. Let's try this too. See if that keeps our temperature a little more accurate. So keeping the power set at about 85% does seem to keep the temperature within about a degree. It goes up and down occasionally between 147 and 149, which is nice to know. So if I want to mash in a little hotter, I don't have to worry about it getting 153 or 154. Okay, not sure if you can see that, but crazy clear is exactly what we want. Nice and filtered. So we're going to get ready for mash out. So we're going to crank it up to 168. We'll leave it and uh, we'll bring it up to 100% just to get it up there. There we go. I'll give it a few minutes to get up there and 10 minutes at 168 and we'll be done. Okay, we got to 168 very quickly. So 
So I'm going to drop it back down to that 85%. There we go. Yeah, it's already overshooting to 170, which is fine. But now it's going back down. We'll do that for 10 minutes and we'll mash out and be done. Go on to the boil. Still peaking up around 171, even at 85%, but that's okay. I'm gonna mash out. And let's get this done. What I call the fun part. And there it goes. Pull out that drain for a little bit and then we'll start pouring the sparge water over and rinsing the grains. Little silicone in, like little dogs. Anvil says, based on your total amount of water needed for your batch, you should hold back one gallon for your sparge. I've been doing one, I tried one and a half. One and a quarter seems to be perfect for me. I like one and a quarter seems perfect. I got plenty of flow. Um, and then I'm turn around and soon to rinse the grains pretty good. Still get some, make sure to reward afterwards. Probably could do a second running with extremely low ABV. I'm not sure why the temperature went down, but it's going up. Uh, actually, it's probably the running is just cooled down. This is our second addition for our brewing salts. You want to add anything that could have created some alkalinity early on. Ooh, touch the water a little bit. The baking soda and chalk. Going for a very light balanced profile for the water additions. And of course, as usual, rubbing the bottom, especially with the weed in there, we don't want it to stick. That crush looked a little over on the fine side. The one nice thing about the anvil that I like that you can't do with the brew or grandfather is that I can put a boil in a bag or brew in a bag, however you want to say it, inside of here because there's no big old pipe system down the middle. So if you're using something like a lot of rye or a lot of wheat and you don't want to use dry or liquid extract, you can put a bag in there and reduce the amount of grains that can get through or as far as anything that could create a problem just one nice alternative. I've seen a few people who've done that and recommended it and said it worked really well for them. Okay, I know that says 208, <clears throat> but we've got a nice boil going. As you can see, we've got a nice rolling boil, or should we say a foam? It's trying to do its boil over. Sitting at 209. There we go, there is the boil. You can hear the pretty birds in the background. We're gonna boil for 85 minutes. After that, we'll put our one ounce of Pacific Jade. And this is the Cascade Belgian Wit. We're gonna to add to it. Always wanted to try this stuff. So we're gonna try it. We'll rock on. We're in the last 10 minutes. Normally I scrub the hell out of this before I put it in. So we're just gonna put it in early. It's sitting in the boiling wort for about 10 minutes, maybe a little less. Good thing about quake yeast or farmhouse type yeast is uh, optimal pitching temperature for this is just a little over 84 Fahrenheit. So I'm not even really thinking about putting any ice or cooling it down that much because then I would just have to warm it back up. There we go. I think we're pretty snug. In about five minutes, we're going to start dropping everything in there from the hops to the beer candy per se, which has a very, very citrus and coriander, which is funny because I'm kind of allergic to oranges, but only in large quantities. So I think we'll be just fine. Kind of funny being a Floridian and allergic to oranges, but hey, and for people who are not from the US, a Floridian means somebody who was born and raised in that state. So. I think we can go ahead with a few of our additions. A tablespoon here of yeast nutrient. And then we use 
Then we use the super moss, which is a quarter teaspoon. Add it to some cold beer wort. Okay, I'm gonna say we're uh, going on that five minutes. So let's go ahead and drop our hops. I'm gonna put it in a bag this time around. Using Pacific Jade. It smells amazing. So I treat it like tea, get it nice and wet. And touching that metal, definitely burn the edge of my finger a little. And here we go. Comes the beer candy. One of the reasons I say theorize or theory when I talk about IBUs, because I put it in with about five minutes to spare. And in theory, based on the alpha assets, I should be hitting right at 12 or 11.6, 11.8. But I'm gonna leave it in there as I'm cooling the wort, which is gonna let it go and actually probably add a few more IBUs, probably kicking it up a little closer to maybe 13 to 14, maybe even 15, which is fine because our range for this style of beer is between 10 and 20, which like I said, is a guideline. It doesn't mean you have to do that. It just means it's a guideline. I mean, we're kind of doing a cross between a Belgian wit and a farmhouse Saison, Lithuanian style. Okay, here we go. Not necessary since we're in power off, but hey, okay. Let's kick the water on and cool things down. As you can see, we're already dropping quite rapidly. 207, 190. This is why if you don't have a jaded brewing Scylla or something built just like the Scylla, you're wasting your personal time. You're wasting your time. And you really, it's one of the best investments I've ever made. Crazy how fast that temperature drops. Okay, we're at 90 degrees. Once we get down a little cooler, I'm gonna put it in our uh, carboy and we'll move on from there. Okay, we're at 86 Fahrenheit. Not sure if you can see that. Okay, we're at 86 Fahrenheit, a little foamy. That's okay. We're getting ready, we're gonna move it. What I like about that carboy, since I've already numbered it, and look and watch and aerates everything. Once it's done getting up just over five gallons, we're gonna dump it in the other one. I wasn't going to, I was just gonna go straight into the main carboy that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna use our big mouth one just so we can crop a little bit of that yeast. But I like this one because I get up here, I measure it, and then when I dump it, even though the other one can measure it, when I dump it, I really aerate the wort, which is key for, I'm sorry, pretty much any yeast, even a farmhouse or quike, however you wanna say it. Um, basically, you still want that aeration. And that aeration is gonna help get that yeast going. And I'll show you what the yeast looked like before I actually created a yeast starter for it. It's kind of cool if you haven't seen it before. Okay, wait, we'll get up to this little over five gallons and we'll rock on. Okay, so we put it in a big mouth. That way I can actually harvest some of the yeast bubbling across the top. I'm gonna put it in the garage, which sits at about 85 Fahrenheit. I may put it in the fermenter and kick the heater on. I'm not sure. The stuff goes between 68 and 95 Fahrenheit. Here's what I want to show you. Okay, so I did a yeast starter. I mean, looks like your typical yeast. Not a big deal. It's, it's yeast. I started that yeast starter with less than probably half a gram of this stuff. It literally looks like fruit leather. You know what I'm talking about? Where they take fruit and they mash it, cook it up, do whatever, and then spread it really thin and it feels and peels like a soft leather that you eat. And this stuff smells good. <laughs> yes, I am tempted. I think once I create my own, I might try it just to see what it tastes like. I mean, I know it's supposed to be packed with B vitamins. Who knows? So that's what came in the mail. Like I said, I got it off eBay. I'll put a link down below for the reseller who's selling it on eBay, something far north or something, but basically you'll see. 
He's got one of the best selections I've seen yet, and the stuff's very viable, works great. At least it appears to be in the e-starter. When we put it in here, we'll find out. So let's go ahead and I'm only gonna pitch about half. We actually are a little higher. I mean, one, two, three, four, five. It's a hair over five here. But when I measured, which I measured with one gallon jugs originally, it was showing a good solid five and probably 0 0.3, 0 0.35. So it looked like it was more than five gallons. So either this is wrong or my measurement's wrong, which I'm pretty OCD when I measure things, but we'll see. So let's go ahead and pitch this. There we go. I'm gonna put the big mouth bubbler on here. I almost forgot. I have a blue and a red tilt hydrometer. There's an old 2.0s, which I say old, but they're 2.0s. They need to be calibrated every single time you put them in. They still recommend it, but this is the new yellow one. I've used it once. I'm gonna put it in here. It's already perfect. I haven't had to recalibrate it. Drop it on in there. Splash down. So I think bad about the big <laughs> You push it down, all the air comes out because it's airtight. There we go. I think that's, I don't know if that's getting any tighter. So we'll see. And I'll take a quick reading on that and I'll post it in the video also. But we'll let that sit and that's it. Time to let it ferment and see how it goes. Never fermented a Quake or a Lithuanian farmhouse, whichever you want to call it. It's kind of like saying a wit beer and a Saison were married and this is what happened. Thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, share, share, share. Thank you again.